Welcome back, everyone, to Talking Devils podcast, brought to you by TalkTheDevils.co.uk, your number one independent Manchester United podcast. Tonight, I'm joined by Mr. Wayne Barton, Manchester United author, and joined by former Manchester United player Marcus Neymar. And today, we're here to talk all things Manchester United. This is our specific, the Ragnik Tactic podcast. We're going to be delving into everything, all things Ralph Ragnik, what he's doing with Manchester United. We're going to talk about more the tactical side rather than, I suppose, the rumours, the gossip, all the usual gist that you'd usually talk about. First of all, lads, haven't talked to both of you in quite some time. How is the form? How's it going? Um, yeah, I'm not bad, mate. Yeah, um, good for seeing United win a couple of games, which has, it's been a while that we've won games back to back, right? So, um, yeah, always helped by that. Um, helped me get over my COVID nightmare, but um, obviously everyone's going through that as well. So, um, yeah, just good to see United back to winning ways. It's always good. It's always good when United are winning ways, especially, as you said, look, during the COVID pandemic, you know, there's a lot of things that impacts life. But when Manchester United win, it always kind of, it's always that escape. It's always kind of you know, gives you that bit of kind of spring in your step. And look, hopefully this winning feeling you know, continues after this winter break. Marcus, we haven't chatted in, in, in two weeks and it was a very detailed chat we had about you know, all things United, you know, all things with the players. How how's life been going for you? How's kind of work and stuff like that been going? Yeah, it's 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 going okay. I mean, I'm uh, I'm in a new job now. I'm training the youth team of the FC Basel um, on the 13s, and for me, it's a new life. Um, from inside the pitch to the outside lines, and uh, yeah, it gives me an amazing view of uh, yeah uh, what I always thought it gonna be as a player because I always dreamed of being a coach, and now. Yeah, things uh, things turn around, and I and I love my new life, as I'm very passionate about being a footballer. It's the same about being a coach, and it's very good to to support young kids to fulfill their dreams and to give them them some advice and uh, yeah, and to 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 lead them the way what they have to do and support them. It's great. That's absolutely fantastic to hear, and a very interesting fact you're working at Basel as well because. They have a great history in terms of developing U, U academy players, such as Man United do as well. And yeah. you're obviously on the European stage as well. So that's absolutely cracking to hear that you're, you're at a great football club as you were at Manchester United as well. But lads, it's been like, it's been a kind of, as I said, a good two weeks for Man United. We've been so back in form. We've been, I suppose, almost controlling games, something that we haven't seen in, in kind of the, I suppose, the last kind of five months of the season. Um, Wayne, I'll just come to you first, um, just with regards to um, the last two games, obviously Brentford and um, you know in, in the league. Like it, with regards to the Brentford game, like where where what, what was your thoughts in terms of performance? Because the, the first half um, in in the Brentford game, it was a case that you know Brentford were you know, giving it all their all and looked like they were on top, but it looks like Ralph Ragnick, you know, from the tactical side of things look like to kind of change the shape and really give the players kind of that extra gear. What was your overall thoughts on the performance against Brentford and I suppose Ralph's adaptability to change things? Yeah, I, at the moment, you would say the adaptability aspect of it seems pretty good because it's yielding good results and, and good, decent-ish performances. I, you and Marcus talked about it last time. The one concern I have is that it, it's a lot of changes nearly all the time and I don't know if that's the players if that's the manager that's there's, there's something to worry about uh, but you do want to see consistency you want to see consistency with selection you want to see consistency with formation and obviously against West Ham and against Brentford we saw changes in every half didn't we really we to, to chase the results um we saw a lot under Ollie if you remember um these poor p- first half performances and then they'd come on strong in the second, particularly away from home. Yeah. And um, under Ollie, perhaps towards the end of his reign, not towards the end, sorry, towards the middle of his reign, they had a knack of sort of pulling themselves together before Ollie needed to change anything. They, they Even if they started poorly, they'd get the rights together around half an hour, 35 minutes, you know, so they'd end the yeah. off strong. Um, and under Rangnick, it doesn't seem to have been the case. It seems to be that the players have sort of taken the excuse to take a step back and let the manager do the changing. And he's done that. And obviously we saw a dramatic difference against Brentford. We were magnificent for 30 minutes after that, after half time. Yeah. 
Um, and it obviously made the change as well. Um, bold enough to bring Ronaldo off and it yielded a goal almost straight away. So he's got that to um, fall back on. Against West Ham, um, you know, this is a very divisive thing because I was at Old Trafford. I know that when I came out afterwards, you know, you've sat through 89... Well, for 89 minutes, it looks like it's going to be a nil-nil draw and West Ham haven't really had to be pushed that hard to defend for that nil-nil draw. And then we win and everything feels a little bit different. I still felt, well, I'm not too sure about this. And then when I left Old Trafford and I got signal back on my phone, everyone's saying, oh, we controlled that game and it looked pretty good. And I suppose when you look back and you watch it again, it did. You know, we controlled it. Uh, West Ham weren't particularly offensive. They were organised, but they weren't brilliant. We restricted and, them less than nothing, didn't we? Like, they didn't create that many chances. And Antonio was kept very quiet as well. Yeah, and he, he wasn't very good, to be fair. I don't think he... Like like I'm saying, defensively and, and defensively, they didn't push us very hard. They they were organised, but they, apart from Rice, who was dominant for a while, I didn't think they particularly played very well. Um, but Ragnick, to be fair to him, again, probably less tactical against West Ham, but more about attitude. He, he made three very attacking substitutions, and they paid off because all three substitutes combined for the goal... And I think at a time when we needed that Old Trafford, that's probably more important than the tactical aspects. I know we're here to talk about tactics, and it was more important against Brentford because he, he sort of changed the shape and moved Fernandez further forward. Against West Ham, I think it was more about attitude in that last sort of half an hour. And he, you know, he made those changes, um, bringing on the substitutes, and it and it brought that last minute winner. Um, it, it, it's probably a matter of personnel at the moment that winning in the last minute against West Ham, West Ham in the way that we did it, is probably where we are at the minute. You know, we, you know, you would have seen Chelsea, Liverpool, um, City dominate that West Ham team probably a little bit more than what we did. Um, that's where we are at the minute, and we got the result. Um, and yeah, that that's where I am with that. I think the first game, Brentford, tactically, you can say did really well. Second game against West Ham, uh, perhaps not tactically, but in attitude. And perhaps at this moment, the attitude is more important. We needed to see that. And um, two good wins, really. Two good wins because they're important at, at this um, particular time. Yeah, and I think for, for me, I think if you look at the, the West Ham game in particular, I think one thing I, I noticed during it is the fact that we at the back we seemed a bit more secure, and it seemed like McTominay when he played in the hole in midfield role. It's something I'm going to touch on with Marcus in a moment. In terms of McTominay in hole in midfield role, I thought he'd done very well to kind of help slide in between the two centre backs and really kind of restrict kind of Lanzini to nothing. And obviously Antonio had to drop deep to try to get the ball. And Harry Maguire, as much as I've been criticising him recently in terms of the performances he had, I thought Harry Maguire dealt very well that physical battle of Antonio because I thought that he might struggle. I spoke to Phil last Friday and Phil, me and Phil did think that that could be a key key part of our game um, on Saturday. But look, I thought it was a very good good game overall for us in terms of that because if you look at West Ham, they've given City, you mentioned the games against City, yeah, City dominating them, but if you look at the Chelsea game and the Liverpool game, they gave them a lot of bother. They did, they they, you know, they gave them a lot of bother. And I think if you, if you look at that now, the way we restricted them to nothing in terms of chance creation. If you look at their midfield, like Rice and Suchek in midfield, who are two very good midfielders, especially if you look at Suchek getting forward late into the box, we didn't see any of that because of the way our, the way our defensive shape was. So for me, defensively, it was great to see kind of that type of performance. And as I said, you mentioned the three substitutes, um, you know, in terms of you know, Martial coming on, um, you know, Cavani coming on. Like you know, them, them substitutions were brave, and he went to a 4-2-4, and he, he just went for it. And there are things we would have seen back in at Sir Alex's time when, look, that there's 10, 20, 10 to 15 minutes to go. Go for it. Joe. It's Old Trafford. Joe. We're Manchester United. And that's what we've seen, not only in West Ham, but in the Brentford game as well. Marcus, we talked um, a couple of weeks ago just with regards to Rod's system and in terms of how, how we adapt to that system. In the last two games, he's played a 4-3-3 with Scott McTominay playing as a lone, ho- ho- lone holding midfielder. The last three games, yeah. The last three yeah, games. Last and three I think games, also, yeah. also against Villa, he started with that, with Fernandes being uh, behind the striker. And yeah. Before Fernandes, he was more on a wing role, which 
doesn't suit him at all. And I think now what, what he does, in my opinion, he did something really clever because uh, when he came, I think he wanted too much. He wanted to change the mentality. He wanted to change the way they play. He wanted to change the aggressivity that, that he needs in his game. And um, I think after the first few games, he saw that he doesn't have the legs to play in this way because he doesn't have two central midfielders who can cover this space um, as he wants to. You know, if you want to play with a high pressing, a high repressing, you need a lot of fresh legs. And at the moment, United doesn't have these players. So I think what Ralph Rangnick did, he gave uh, the players no excuses anymore. He changed the system to what they are used to and he asked them for more intensity and more aggressivity. And you saw that in the last two, three games. And in the end, as you said, the last 15, 20 minutes, he even changed the system. And I think none of the players really, uh, you know, felt it or realized that he changed it because the mentality changed in, in, in that time. Because what you do is as a coach, you have your own idea how the, the team wants to play. And many coaches want it to quickly and therefore that they, they struggle in somehow. And um, what Rangnick did, he went two, three steps back from what he normally wants to see because for him, the 4-4-2, uh, there's no discussion, you know, it's the only system for him, basically. But he went away from that and gave the players no excuses anymore. And he put the responsibility to the players again, you know, to the, to the, to the big players like Fernandez, like Ronaldo, Ronaldo, they need to make the big difference. And now, even when they came off, they came other players on the pitch and they made the difference, which, which uh, is exactly what he wants, you know. And on that, Rangnick can build on because he can tell them, listen, guys, it's not up to the tactics because in the end, we scored the goals in a 4-4-2. And when a coach comes and players are used to play in a 4-2-3-1, like with Ole all the time, then for players, it's like the whole world going to change. And then there's a lot of stress because everybody thinks, oh, we play with one mid midfielder less. Uh, Bruno thinks, oh, for me, there's no position anymore, you know. So there's a lot of, yeah, unsecureness in the squad for the players themselves. And, you know, everybody now is, is curious, is the coach on my side? Does he want to support me? Um, is he going to planning with me in the future? You know, it's always the same things for professionals when a new coach arrives, you know. And I think Rangnick did that really clever in the last two, three games to change that, to put the pressure a little bit of away from the tactic mind of of few, you know, because uh, for the players, it's always a big issue. I can tell you, I was always a professional uh, in that. And uh, for me, I always thought about tactics 24 hours. And um, that's why I love being a coach, by the way. But for many players, it's also a big issue, you know, because the whole, how should I say, the, the balance of the whole team changes. For the two central midfielders, it makes a big difference if they play to, to, uh, alone or if they play with a holding number six, you know. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's such a big difference. And if that changes, the wingers get more into spaces, you know, and the strikers don't need to work as much as they have to do with two strikers up front. And they are all points they can change the balance of a whole game. And we saw that now against Brentford and West Ham, that uh, United seemed to have more control than before. And it was just with one player more in midfield. It's really clever in my, from my point of view. And in terms of your talk about like the, the overall system, in terms of his hard work and do the pressing and counter-pressing, one, two, well, two players I really want to touch on in terms of Ralph Ragnick's influence, because Scott McTominay and Anthony Alanga who are two academy players, effectively, yeah. two, yeah. two of our own coming out of the academy. Scott, statistically, has been Man United's best player since Ralph Ragnick has come in. Um, yeah. All the statistics and all the information um, backs that up. And uh, arguably, at the moment, Anthony Alanga has probably been the most impactful in terms of his press and his aggressiveness, his overall um, duo. Yeah, but even McDominay was struggling when he was playing uh, in a 4-4-2, you know. It was too much responsibility because he's a player who, is, who has his qualities off the ball, to be honest. He's, he's okay when he has the ball, but you, you will assure me that in the Premier League, I think there are 30, 40 players that are better on the ball, you know, yeah. in that case. But that's a lot of stress for a player. If he knows that he doesn't have Fernandes up front, where you can pay easy passes and secure passes to the wide or maybe to the back. It, 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 puts, it puts stress on you as a player. And now with that extra man, you, did you see a different McTominay? And it's crazy because with one more player in midfield, you can change 
everything, you know, and it was really, really intelligent from him to do that. And do you think with, with this kind of new system that he's going with now and the kind of having that extra body in midfield, let's say for all harm's sake in these next couple of months that I know there's a couple of outgoings in terms of Donny van der Beek maybe leaving and the Jesse maybe going on the way out as well. So maybe he may look at maybe some of these players like Paul Pogba, for example, when he comes back, that he can maybe be the extra man in midfield, you know, when he yeah. comes back. Or do you think he may put him out in the wing like Oli did last season? Maybe, yeah. I think for Rangnick now, the most important thing is that he has found a system where players feel secure. And when he feels that the team has the intensity, the aggressiveness on the pitch, you know, that mentality they, that they can win games at any point, you know, that mindset when they have that, then he will start to change the system. Then he will start to, to uh, change the tactics, to put players around again. But he's clever. He, it will take time. It will not, he will not do it tomorrow or in the next game or whatever. He will do it step by step, I think. That's, that's, that's my point of view. And with Pogba, yeah, I think Rangnick is a, is a guy who never gives a fuss about uh, names. He always, uh, for him, in, in that in that term, he's very German. For him, the team is the most important thing. And it's a good thing. And uh, I, I remember uh, a saying of Thomas Müller when he said, um, yeah, maybe no German player will ever win the Ballon d'Or, but we have four stars on our, on our jersey because we won the World Championship four times because we are used to, to play in a team. And a team is with 11 players. And other teams, they might have better individual players and then maybe they can make uh, 500 step overs or at Ronaldo at his best, um, leave three players, you know, in a one against one. But um, German, that's a German mentality. You can only win as a team. And, if, and I think it's a good thing because you can put it back into the United DNA, you know, because there are a big similarities to the, to the Fergie way of approaching... Uh, Football, uh, football learning skills. Because for him, the club was always the biggest, uh, the biggest thing, you know. And he always t taught us this, and he told us every day we saw it. We should care about each other. And uh, United is the biggest team, and we want the ball. And if we don't have the ball, we want it straight back again, you know. And it was like somebody's preaching to us, you know, every day, day in, day out. And and I think with Ralph Rangnick, they have a similar person who who works in the in a similar direction. Marcus mentioned one thing, Wayne, in terms of Manchester United DNA. Obviously, we've seen Anthony Langa come in now, and he's off. He's after displacing yeah. Marcus, Jesse Lingard, and Anthony Martial, who's obviously after leaving on loan just yesterday. Wayne, when you when you when you look at the DNA side of things, and Ralph wanting to work with young players, do you maybe think he's setting kind of, I suppose, a standard for the next prospective manager coming in, or maybe himself, maybe when he goes permanent, that. The Man United continue to give you a chance, and we do maybe look at our academy to maybe fill some holes in the squad with some of the players who are going to be out of contract in these next couple of months. Like, do we see like a Hannibal maybe come up? He's playing very well in Afcon, and he played in the Arab Cup last month. Do, is a player like him maybe looking at the way Ralph Ragnick is given the Langa chances and do, Diogo Dallo? Do these other younger players? Is he maybe looking at this and saying, "I have a chance"? Maybe um, Langa, by the way, has been brilliant. He was fantastic on, on Saturday. He was chasing lost causes. And I know that sounds like a, a silly thing because it seems like a minimum requirement. But when you haven't seen that from a lot of our players and you see there was one particular one where he chased the lost ball into the corner. Um, it was probably it was, it was bouncing for 30 yards and nobody was chasing it. And he, he got there and he stopped it going out. It was probably going out for a goal kick. And he, he prevented that. And he just pushed the play up 30 yards and... These are the kind of simple, they, they, they seem like simple things, but we've not seen them for a couple of years. Yeah. So to see a player doing that, and that's a young player, and Marcus will know this um, very well, that the young players at United are probably told to do that as, as a minimum, just go out and try your best, and yeah. all the rest of it falls into place. I mean, they'll forgive a bad pass, they'll forgive um, a shot that doesn't come off, they won't forgive lack of effort. So if you going up there, you're giving it your best, then that's all you can ask. And, and Alang has been good on the ball as well. I'm not saying that that's all he's done. He's, he's been good. Um, and he was unfortunate to come off on, on, on Saturday. Um, Hannibal is a, is a bit of a different thing. I know he's played on and off, but when he has played for Tunisia, he's been very good. Um, yeah, he's been brilliant. 
you, you would want to hope that he'll be in the mix, but you've already mentioned Pogba. That's another midfielder. The, the jury's still out on Van der Beek, and if he doesn't go out on loan, you've got to imagine that he's going to be given more game time because you can't have a player like that on the sidelines. And to be fair to Rangnick, one thing that he has done, he's been giving everyone a chance, and some of us don't particularly want to see that because in the likes of you know Martial, for example, we'd already seen enough. But a new manager comes in, you accept that all of these players are going to get another chance. They've done that. Mostly, Van der Beek's probably the one senior player who, who could complain that he still hasn't had a chance. Dean Henderson as well. Um, so, Henderson's a bit of a different um, prospect because he's a goalkeeper. Um, but Hannibal, because he's got so much talent, and he, the Pogba argument comes into this because Pogba, in a way, is one of the most gifted players that we've got, and we've got a big problem position in the middle of the park. So you would think it's a natural fit that he's going to go in there, but you already mentioned earlier, Keane. Ollie played him on the wing. Marcus will probably come back and say, like, um, he's got a load of talent, Pogba, and, and he's quite right. But having watched him for the last few years, and I, since he's come back to United, I think his good game ratio is probably around 25%. So that's like one one in four games he's played well. If I, so he, That might be a little bit unfair, but in terms of, do you think Pogba's had a great game? It's probably around that. And that one in four could come against Juventus. It could come against Cardiff. It, but equally, the poor games could come against Cardiff and they could come against Juventus as well. He's, he's so unpredictable. And when you've got a player like that, and Rangnick looks like he's a manager who... And Marcus said it perfectly there. He just prefers consistency all the way through. Yeah, that you you don't really want to base your your long term prospects on something that's so erratic. Um, you're more inclined to get um, effort and endeavour from a young player. The issue is that an Annibal can still be as inconsistent on the ball as a Pogba can. It's quite a big dilemma for for Rangnick, and he's already sort of indicated publicly that he's going to give Pogba the chance, hasn't he? So um, Pogba will be first in line, Van der Beek possibly after that. If So we've got like five or six bodies in there before Annabelle gets a chance. I would like to see him get the chance. Um, I just don't know. As, as we get closer to the wire, when the Champions League place is on the line and we need to get those points, I mean, maybe if there's a couple of games left and we've already qualified, then he'll get those games. Um, realistically, I just think it might be a bit difficult for him this, this season, as much as I would like to see it, obviously. Oh, yeah, I think you're right. I think maybe Hannibal is probably going to be probably the back end of the season. Um, or maybe like if Donny leaves on loan, then maybe we might see him because you know, Pogba, not only his consistency, but his injuries as well. Like he, he does tend to get injured every so often. So like that may be a possibility, but maybe more next season than this season, because obviously there's a full preseason. And there was talk that he has he did impress Ragnick in the training sessions he did have, you know, in that regard. So look, I wouldn't be shocked to kind of see him get into the squad because he is a quality player and he like he's he's very young. Now, now look, obviously young players can have that bit of inconsistency. Now obviously Bruno is obviously ahead of him in the pecking order as well. Bruno never seems to get a rest. The man plays every single game. Like mm-hmm. I, I see a statistic today about Bruno Fernandez in, in terms of since he joined Man United since the, um, January 2020, he's only missed 17 days. 17 yeah. days of, of, <coughs> of, of um, like in, true injury in, in that in that time frame. And so, you know, with regards to like, I can see why Bruno is a, is, a, is a staple in United's team. But Marcus, we're talking about a Ragnick system that likes control. And like yeah. keep possession of the ball and pressing and counter pressing. Donny van de Beek is word renowned for that in terms of what he used to do for, for Ajax in that system, in terms of being in a controlling system, in terms of you know being, I suppose, the profile of player that you know, that people were saying prospectively before Ralph came in that Ralph would have liked him. Yeah. What do you think is going wrong for Van de Beek at the moment? Like what why do you think he isn't playing? Is it a case he's not he just hasn't adjusted to English football? Because a player of his quality from a technical perspective in terms of keeping possession of the ball, you'd like to think you know, Donny van der Beek would, would be in the pecking order for Ralf Ragnick. What do you think is going wrong for him at the moment? I think uh, van der Beek is not a typical player for Ragnick because um, van der Beek always used to play in a three-man three midfield in Ajax. Um, 
the Ajax style of football is more ball controlling than uh, than the rock and roll football from Ralf Rangnick, if I can say so, because uh, Ralf Rangnick plays a football, wants to play football, which is with high intensity, with very a lot of vertical passes. And um, the football of Ajax is more controlling the ball, sideways passes, uh, not that big tempo, um, a little bit like Barcelona. And therefore, Donny van der Beek in a 4-4-2, I think there's no position for him really. As a number 10, I think for, for, for Rangnick, he doesn't score en enough goals or doesn't make enough assists, which is also a big, big, big issue, you know, because uh, when you change your system and play with uh, one more man in midfield, he has to he has to be on the scoreboard in one way or another, you know. He needs he needs to make the difference, and with Donny van der Beek, I, I don't see it. And um, as you mentioned, also the, the, the English football is a, a little bit different compared to European football. You know, the intensity is higher, and the tempo is higher. Um, tactics are not such important as they uh, are in the in the Dutch league, for example. And um, yeah. He, you saw it when he was playing at Ajax, and he has a team who trusts him. He he can play, yeah, he can play incredible football. But you see also when he comes on for United, he's missing that confidence, you know. And a player of of his of his uh, caliber with uh, that money that he costs, you expect a little bit more. Same with Pogba, you know. If somebody has a price tag, 40, 50, 60 million. You expect that he does a consistent uh, performance week in, week out. But, you know, human beings are not robots. And if they don't feel the, the, the confidence of their teammates, not even the coach, then it's different, difficult, you know. You saw also with Bruno the last uh, games before he, they played in a 4-4-2-3-1 four, 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 and he had to play on the wing. He, he didn't seem to be confident also on the ball, you know. He was... Uh, he was uh, misjudging a lot of situations, what he normally doesn't do in centre of midfield. He didn't have confidence on the ball. Against the ball, it's always a mix between uh, I don't need to work uh, backwards with uh, a little bit over the top, you know, which makes it always a little bit dangerous. But yeah, it's not it's not easy to, to have these players because uh, the number 10s, they're always a little bit special you know they have special moments but they need a lot of treatment and a lot of support and i think ralph rangnick just doesn't have the time to do that at the moment because he needs to get his team moving and he wants to make progress with the team and if the team is at a stage where they are very consistent and stable you know then then you can include these players but i think um when the, the point will arrive both of them they will not be at united anymore i think can I, can yeah. I jump in and ask Marcus a question? Um, in the time when you were playing, yeah. 2005 6, when you were close to the first team, yeah, that was just after, well, at, at the time when you were really close, when you were yeah. playing really well in the reserve side and you were the captain and yeah. the reserve time, the reserve side was playing really well. Skulls had the injury, the eye injury, and he was mm -hmm. out, and we played O'Shea and Giggs in central midfield for a long time. I'm looking at Annabelle now, and we've just been talking about him. Yeah, a player like that, and obviously the, the the kind of the first team picture is fairly similar. You know, we're challenging for the Champions League. We're not we're not looking like we're going to win the league. We're looking for the Champions yeah. League, and obviously yeah. there's a big investment in there to make sure that we. Of I course, say investment yeah. in terms of yeah. the squad, in terms of we want to challenge for the Champions League. Yeah. So you, yeah. from your position, obviously it would have been frustrating to see. That O'Shea and Giggs weren't really normally central midfielders, but they were playing all the time in there because obviously Sir Alex wanted the the experience in there. Yeah, and that might well be the case with Ryan Nick. He might call upon players like you know maybe. A... I'm not sure about that, Wayne. I'm not sure about that. That Ralph Rangnick would do that because for him the intensity and the team is all above everything. And if he thinks okay. that he needs fresh legs, he will the same like Elanga. He will put. He, yeah. Nobody thought about that. He will put a Langa a few yeah. games in a row as a left wing. If he feels that the, the boy is ready and he can give him that intensity and stability, then he will do it. He, he always chooses intensity over, over um, how should I say, experience. And every coach is different. So Alex always, at a certain point of his career, always has chosen 
yeah, uh, this the other way around. In the beginning, when he didn't have a big choice and he saw a really bunch of good lads at that yeah. time, he put them all in as young players. But there was also a moment when he was uh, looking for experienced players, you know. And I, with Rangnick, he doesn't care about experienced players. He wants to play his style of football and he looks which player fits best. And I think um, for uh, for Elanga and... Uh, for every young player at the club, it's a big, big chance to to get in that team. I think personally. that's really interesting. That's really interesting. That's yeah, awesome. I think personally, and I also think that Pogba and Van der Beek will have a really, really difficult time because he also wants them to work hard in training. That's that's a German mentality. If you don't train at one hundred percent, how can you play in a weekend one hundred percent? And this is a thing where the young players will benefit, obviously, because. They have the motivation. They don't have 500 international caps and, uh, you know, and I don't say a lot of money, but they have dreams. They have, uh, they have feelings, you know, and they want to, they, they have a point to prove. And with the experienced players, it's always, yeah, as you said, you never know what you're going to get out of him. You said it perfectly. You know? One time uh, you get a perfect out of the outstanding performance and the next three games you go home and you're disappointed with the, uh, yeah, what what you have seen in Old Trafford again, you know. I'm I'm very, like with a couple of young players that we do have. I'm kind of sick and Jamie Garner is out on loan now. I'd like to see Jamie Garner in the Ralph Ragnick system, considering yeah. how well he's playing for us in the championship at the minute. I'm thinking like as a midfield player in terms of what Ralph likes in midfield. Yeah. If if Ralph stays on for another year, let's say if we don't sort out the manager situation in these next coming months, and Ralph is still there come pre season, I'd like to see J- James Garner especially get a chance under him because he does like young players and Garner is ripping it up in the championship at the minute. Now, look, I know the championship is a much different standard to the Premier League, but one thing it is, it's, it's very competitive and is high intensity. So, like, in terms of young players, I'd, yeah. I'd like to see, see Eaton Lair, Joe James Garner, those players like that who are yeah. very young and promising. Like, if you talk about attacking fullbacks and fullbacks are on the ball, Laird in these last two years at MK Dons and Swansea before he's obviously after going to form it now on loan, very good, very attacking, very direct, and very good on the defensive side as well. So, if if Ralph is still here and he's let's say if he's in the management role, that'd be great. Or even that as part of the consultancy role that he's in, if he can work with that new manager and help breed more of these young players out of Manchester United, because that's our DNA, and that's the way we every like every manager post Svalix has got one or two out of the academy. When you look at the current academy products that are there now. Like this is probably the heaviest we've had. I'd say I'd say in the last decade. If you look at like like the Greenwood coming out, Rashford coming out, Don McTominay coming out, Brandon Williams. Do you know what I mean? You've Garner, you've Laird, you've Tai Chong. Like the, the the list goes on in terms of some of these academy players who've come out in these last couple of years and who've got debuts for the first team. Now, if you look at the players I just mentioned there, Oli Gunnar Solskjaer is massively responsible for that. If people want to talk about Oli's legacy, United in terms yeah. of manager, he helped stabilize. Us. But one thing he did do as well is he did play at youth as well. He did yeah. he like yeah. wasn't there 15 first team debuts under Ollie Gunnar Solskjaer, 15 or 16. Wayne, you might correct me if I'm wrong there. It was in around that that mark. So like if you look at the overall academy and you look at the overall structure, let's say in the last five, six years, we've really kind of rejuvenated. And if Ralph Ragnick is coming into this football club, regardless of what role he's going to be in, whether it's manager or consultancy. I'd like to see this academy really be you know, displayed and the, the talent and the, the talent that comes out of the cliff really be displayed at Old Trafford because when you look at that Brentford game, three of our goal scorers were academy graduates. Elanga, Greenwood, Rashford. Do you know, if, if we're going to get back to where we want to be, yes, we need to buy good players that are going to suit the system. But Marcus, you hit the nail on the head in terms of players who want to die for the badge, players who will go that extra mile. Sometimes mm. it will be them academy lads who who are Manchester born and bred, or they're from, you know, they're in the academy since a young age. Do you know what I mean? Like maybe sometimes you need that. Like you, yeah, you, you look- definitely need it, you know. And the good thing is that also with the coach, if you compare Ole, Ole with uh, Ralf Rangnick, Ole was a player that tried to put in a good mood, tried to put back the United DNA, but he wasn't a creator. You know, he, he, he was the coach who created... Uh, a team into a certain way he wants to, to play football and he wants to see football, you know. He didn't know how to do that because he never learned it. 
And Ralph Rangnick, he has a clear idea where he wants to go, where, how he wants to play and how he has to progress the players. And with Ole, there was no progress. He just tried to keep the standards or the, the, the level that he had from the players to keep them up with a good mood, with a good surrounding, with a good uh, atmosphere around the club. You know, that's what he did to stabilize the whole situation. But to build and to create a new playing style or create a new identity, you need a coach like Ralph Rangnick, you know, to get people out of their comfort zone, you know. Because when happens, uh, when happens really the, the progress when you're out of your comfort zone? And when you come out of your comfort zone, when an academy player comes into the first team and takes your place, then a player like Pogba or Ronaldo or Bruno, they think, come on, he's 18, 19, he didn't play anywhere and he plays better than me, you know, I need to do more on the pitch. And these are the things that Ralf Rangnick wants to achieve, you know, he wants to provo provocate the, the big players, you know, to put them out of their comfort zone. And I really like that way, you know, and uh, if he has the support from the club, then it's the best thing you can have as a coach because you can always have your standards and you can always reach them because the guy who doesn't uh, play the game, you put him out. But the next one is there to go to, to that uh, I, to go to that intensity and to that standard, you know, and that's a good thing. And with Ole, he just tried to keep everybody happy and tried to put uh, as many names on the pitch as he could do. He even put Pogba on the left wing, you know, and it was his way because he, he, he knew he was, uh, I wouldn't say he's limited as a coach, but he didn't have that experience or he didn't have that backpack with all these ideas how to create and how to build up uh, a player or a team because it needs time and you need to know how and you need to provocate people you know you need to put them out of their comfort zones and Ole is not the type of guy who put people out of their comfort zones he's the guy you know you want to go to a dinner with you know you have a good time but he's not the guy who tells you the truth uh, when things are not going good and that's a different thing I said about Ali like one thing when you look at the, the players and the one thing I say about Ollie in that is, is he was more of a best friend than a father figure to some of these players. And I think that's what maybe when it got to maybe crunch point this season, I think maybe when them, some of them conversations were needed to be had because exactly. of his, I suppose, exactly. the close they had, it was hard to have that. Yeah, and Fergie had that. He know when he had to play, had to tell a playoff, he didn't care if it was Scolzi or if it was Keen or if it was Bex, uh, he didn't care. And, you know, that kept that team alive for such a long time because he always put one guy or another in that role to prove himself again. And this is the key for success because when you have too many uh, happy players in your team, you will not win anything, you know, if you don't have that hunger anymore, that, that, uh, that ability to prove something, that point to prove. And at the moment, Ralph Rani tries to get that back into the team. And he always, and he also wants to provocate other players with putting Alanga on the left wing. As easy as it is, it sounds stupid, but uh, this brings a lot of energy and a lot of moving into the team. Especially, yeah. you're right with that, especially because we were so blessed in that area of the pitch yeah. with the senior players and he's put a youth player. Yeah, it's a great point. That's no, a great point. Yeah. Absolutely, and, and it's it, it, again like one thing we were made aware of before he came in is if you look at his time at Leipzig and Salzburg, he does do breed in young players, and some of them young players go on then to the bigger clubs, you know. Yeah. So Ralph Ragnick has done a fantastic job, and he has a great reputation in that regard for kind of do breeding young players, breed them into yeah. a system, and have players yeah. all singing off the same hymn sheet. Before we wrap up, Marcus, the last question I just want to ask is not related to tactics, but. In terms of your time at Manchester United, in terms yeah. of obviously you've been through the Youth Academy and you've so you've played with Joe you know, many players and you've obviously been in around the club with like so Phil and Lee, who we have here Joe you know, on, on the Friday podcast as well. In terms of like training ground, in terms of like Joe you know, like teammates and Joe you know, others at the football club, who who was like the I suppose your toughest opponent in training? Who would always be that guy who would always be on it though every single day, one hundred percent every day of training? He was just like that deal well that best pair in training it was Pique it was Gerard you know with him we you're were just saying, you're just saying that because he's your best mate Let's yeah be yeah but that's the funny thing about it because we were such good mates off the pitch but on the pitch we didn't you know we, we didn't accept anything from the other guy you know we were always yeah. betting against each other 
There were times in the in the night when we went out at half past 11 and we played one against one on the street, you know, and nobody wanted to lose. Everybody was cheating and, you know, it was... And with him, it was like this, you know, because we were in a similar point at that time of our of our stage and we were like competing against each other against each other and it helped us you know because we wanted to make the other guys stronger even though we played in a different different positions or on the pitch but for us it was really helpful you know especially for me I learned a lot from him in terms of being strong in your head um, always prove a point to yourself you know always work hard and for me, it was a really, really learning, learning time, and it was a really good experience. And uh, you know, the, 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 you, you cannot, you cannot always be good to each other. Sometimes it's like in your marriage. Sometimes you need to fight because when you're good all the time, you know, there's a problem somewhere somehow. You know, it's and I'm not a psychologist, you know. And in football, it's kind of the same. If you if your coach always tells you you're good and uh, you're perfect. It doesn't work out. He's lying to you because at some point you need to improve. You always need to improve. No matter if you are Ronaldo with 36 or 37 or if you are Alanga with 18, 19. You always have a point to prove. And this mentality, you have to give in. And players like Gerard or Ronaldo, they have it. They have it naturally in themselves. And other players don't. And that is why it's so important and good to have players like this in the club. Absolutely. It's always great to have these players who have elite mentality. So... Like, let's say they're doing well, but they want to reach that next level. I think that's very important to have at a football yeah, club. You need to push level. people out of their comfort zones, as easy as it is. It sounds quite easy, but it's not. Believe me. Absolutely. Guys, I'm going to wrap it up there for tonight's podcast. It's been an absolute you know, great chat we've had tonight in terms of Manchester United, in terms of tactics, and you know, in terms of everything that's going on. It's always great to get Wayne and Marcus's insight on the show. Next week on the podcast, what I will be doing on the podcast, Marcus, is we're going to deep dive into more Ralph Rangnick's philosophy and what his overall impact has been on German yeah. football and deep dive into the philosophies of Thomas Tuchel and Jurgen Klopp and how he helped them. So we will dive yeah. into all that and how Ralph has been kind of, I suppose, the master of German football. So if you do, if you are interested in Bundesliga, you're interested in Manchester United and overall kind of football philosophies, do jump on to next, po next week's podcast at 9pm. It's going to be fantastic. And also... Do check us out uh, on Friday at 7 p.m. on Talk Devils, Lee, Lee Lawrence and Phil Marsh. We'll be looking ahead to a lot more Manchester United-related topics as well. And also check out Wayne's Monday podcast with Paul Parker and also Dave's podcast with Scott Wooten as well. We have plenty of former Manchester United players insight here. So if you want to get ex-pro insight and so in-depth analysis, do check out Talk the Devils YouTube channel. And look, if you're watching on Twitter, you're watching on Facebook or any of the rest of our social media platforms, get over to YouTube, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, and this is the place to be for all your Manchester United-related content, and also our website at www.talkadevils.co.uk. But until then, everyone, thanks very much for watching, and who's going to listen on the replay as well. Until then, we'll see you later, guys. Thank you.